now uh, uh, i mean i'm going to uh, should i stay yeah. start or to should i wait for another one minute or two minutes or should i start so should i start i think uh, should start okay fine i mean there no cool i'm i'm going to eat a bhalo bot and at one dozen quite so uh, i request dr bharati bharali the assistant professor department of communication and journalism guwahati university and she is also a uh, prominent writer she is going to give you uh, give and welcome speech over to dr bharati bharali good evening ladies and gentlemen it is my pleasure to welcome you all to this international web talk organized by samrit studio film club i must have to mention that with the brief birth of this a silent movement on understanding of cinema has begun in the north eastern part of india amidst this pandemic with the initiative of parthasit borua and ananya hiloidare i on behalf of the samrit studio film club would like to extend a special welcome to our guest speaker professor jo musera fodo professor at political science institute in paris he is and madam uh, excuse me the voice is breaking down uh, am i audible now yes yes ma'am yeah uh, he is an eminent film historian film critic and former editor in chief of kayardu cinema we are privileged to have you amongst us sir and thank you for giving us your precious time today uh, we are really eagerly waiting for the session now may i request mr mridul bordolo to read out the short bio note of professor uh, fodu thank you ah sorry good evening to all present in this particular platform well it is uh, indeed a privilege on my part to welcome professor Jean Michel Fauden presently professor at Political Sciences Institute in Paris he is an eminent film historian and film critic he was the editor in chief of the french film magazine khayayi du cinema from 2003 to 2009 uh, which was co-founded in uh, 1951 by andre baza jacques doniel valcos and joseph mary loduga master filmmakers like jacques rivet jean luc godard clout chapgol and prasa trufo contributed their articles to this distinguished journal professor kudo worked for the french weekly liu foi in 1983 moving on to leading french daily liu monde in 1990 he was founder of the think tank uh, lexception lexception professor at science po pari he is a professorial fellow in film studies and creative industries at the university of st andrews scotland and professor at the film factory university of sarajevo professor fodan has authored and edited many books on several filmmakers such as woody allen olivier isayas robert brezon imas jetai house yosian jia chanke and edward yang He has authored books on the history of French and Chinese cinema, non-Western cinemas, uh, fiction and documentary, cinema and the Shao, and so forth. He has been teaching at Otio Sorbonne University and Ecole Normale Supérieure, and presently teaches at Sciences Po Paris. Professor Fauden also served as a juror at various international film festivals in the world. His recent book, The War of Jia Changke is out in the market for English readers. So I extend my heartiest welcome to Professor Jean Michel Frodon and eagerly look forward to this conversation. Uh, welcome once again, sir, to this platform. Now I would uh, like to request Partha to uh, take over and perhaps you know initiate the discussion. Over to you, Partha. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Medhu Bordole. You have. Uh, 
given us a brief bio note of John Mitchell Fontana. Uh, we cannot uh, write his such a big personality in, in, in a one page or saying in one page or two pages. It needs time and time to speak about John Mitchell Fontana. It is really our privilege and honor that uh, he has given his consent to interact with uh, the Flemish scholars, the professors, academic, the Flemish students, media students, and the young film makers. So I'm going to ask uh, two, three questions. I'll, I'll have a moderator, and he is Odhiraz Kaishan. Odhiraz Kaishan is a renowned uh, emerging filmmaker, I must say, though he is a student of Film and Television Institute Pune, and at the same time, uh, Film FTII. In short, it's called FTII. This institute has a significant impact in in India because Adur Gopalakrishnan was an alumnus of this prestigious institute, and my co-moderator Adur Kaishop is also uh, is studying in the direction course. So I also welcome my my dear student and my co-moderator, Adhiraz. My first question to uh, John Mitchell Fodol, sir. You have been closely associated with Film Festival for a longer period of time. So can you please enlighten us on the recent development of the Khan Film Festival, more, more specifically in 2021, exactly what goes on during the pandemic time? Yes. Hello, hello uh, everyone. I hope you can uh, hear me uh, okay. Uh, I want to thank you so much for inviting me and tell you how pleased I am uh, to be with you and to be able to have this uh, discussion with you. And I would say even more how grateful I am for the good work you are doing. I think what you are putting together is very important and very necessary. And for me, it is a, it is a great pleasure if I can help in any way. Uh, unfortunately, from afar, but I hope someday also in Assam uh, physically, uh, when the time comes that makes this possible. And of course, also in other places in, uh, in India. Um, I have been attending, I have to say, a Cannes Film Festival for 39 years now, uh, in a row. So it's a, a long uh, experience. Uh, and I should say always with a great pleasure. Um, Cannes Film Festival, for somebody who does what I do, which is uh, to try to share through the media I work for, uh, knowledge and thinking about the cinema of the world is without discussion one of the best places where gather uh, so many films and people related with cinema. So it's a unique opportunity to uh, uh, encounter in a short period of time, more or less 10 days, and a very small uh, space. Uh, everything happens in the in a nutshell. Those who have been to can know about that. It's really a small uh, area. So uh, we are all together, and even if you don't want to meet, you do meet people all the time who are related with cinema. And sometimes it's boring because you don't want to see them. But quite often it's very useful. You 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 learn more than you expected in these encounters, and this is. Of course, not only true of Cannes. This is a characteristic of uh, any important uh, festival, but Cannes is, to a certain extent, the highest degree of this uh, apparatus, which is a international film festival. We can, if you wish, discuss more exten extensively international film festivals as a whole, Cannes serving as a major examples, the most well-known, the most attended example of an apparatus which does exist in uh, so many parts of the world now, which is, which is, which is great. Cannes is a bit special because opposite to other major film festivals, 
most of the Cannes Film Festival is not for the audience. It's for professionals. So it's where professionals would gather, discover film for myself and others like me, write about film, talk about film, but for others, uh, sell the rights, buy the rights, uh, organize new projects for new films to be made, organize the distribution and the circulations of, of the films worldwide. So it's a kind of a, of a concentrated uh, moment of uh, bringing to life and to circulation of cinema at large, which, which is very meaningful. And the, the success of Cannes is that it is at the same time, really at the same time and in the same place, something which has to do with glamour and star system and cocktails and uh, uh, fancy dresses and, and with the art of cinema in its most ambitious way and with business and uh, discussion about money and mm -hmm. with uh, also uh, legal regulation of how to support cinema uh, better uh, in specific situation or how to coordinate uh, so the showing of films uh, in theaters and on the platform or in television and uh, this kind of thing. So this is really the, the, the moment where everything is there at the same time, which is what I think is great with cinema. Cinema has to relate with every dimension of our life, social life, uh, including, of course, artistic dimension, which is very important to me as a, as a film critic. But uh, André Bazin, whose name has been quoted as the founder of, uh, co-founder of Cahier du Cinéma, uh, André Bazin always said cinéma is impure, and this impurity is its best quality. It's mixing so many things of various nature, and one could say Cannes Festival is extremely impure, is uh, the highest level of impurity, and this is what makes it so great. Uh, of course, this year was special because of the pandemic, mainly, not only, but mainly because it was for the first time uh, for ages uh, cancelled last year, so there was a highest expectation uh, this year about about um, about what can happen because there were some uh, security measures uh, related with the pandemic as there should be and everybody was very eager that there would be no cluster and no 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 contamination inside the festival which was the case to prove that cinema can be not a danger for the society and it was it was a, it was a important uh, it was a kind of a, a showcase uh, for the, the the capacity of the cinema people to take care of its viewers and of the the, the rest of the, the society not to to become a, a source of uh, threat and and um, and it was also a festival very intense because there were more films than usual, uh, especially as I'm sure uh, most of you know very well, the Cannes Film Festival includes what is known as the official selection. Official selection is composed of several sections, competition, something called Un Certain Regard, out of competition, plus they added two more um, two more sections this year to welcome more films because there were so many films that had been made but not shown due to the worldwide pandemia. One called Première, Cannes Première, and the other especially dedicated to uh, environmental issues, uh, cinema and climate. Plus there are uh, sidebars, uh, and other parallel uh, selections, some three, are important ones, uh, Director's Fortnight, Critics Week, and something called ACID. Uh, altogether, it's about uh, 150 feature films. Just to discussing, I have to say I've watched only feature films. I couldn't find time to watch also short films. A lot of short films are being shown. Uh, but among these, these, um, these 135 uh feature films, there was a huge amount of proposal and it's almost not possible to to to, to draw a dominant 
characteristic of this election because really uh, it was uh, uh, full of uh, different kinds of uh, of films uh, and we know uh, that there are a lot of uh, there were there were a lot of other films that would have wished to go to Cannes and were not selected. Some of them will be in Locarno, in Venice, in uh, the other uh, com coming festival, maybe in uh, Busan, uh, etc. Uh, but um, already with what was uh, what was present in Cannes, we have a very vast panorama, and at the same time, one would say, I would say, uh, there were big uh, absentees. It's it's not it's not equal. Uh, it's not uh, uh, it's not the same. For, there were too many French films, for instance. It, there was a huge amount of French films, which I think is not right, uh, because the French producers and distributors were so pushy to show their film in Cannes that the festival did accept too many of them. Uh, there were a lot of European films. There were some Asian films, but not. Uh, not enough and very few uh, African films or uh, Latin American films or uh, Arabic films. Uh, so it was, it was not so, uh, it was not so, it, it, it's always a very specific landscape, which is, or uh, maybe it's better to say a map. One map at one moment is drawn by the festival of the cinema of the world, but this, map uh, responds to a certain amount of uh, rules and also of uh, decisions uh, which make it always questionable and this is also our work uh, we the critics and the journalists to discuss and occasionally criticize uh, why is this happening and not that uh, what is missing uh, what what is this decision made and not the other one and it i think it is a it's not for the pleasure of, uh, of discussing, it's helping to build and improve uh, the, the potentiality of what I regard as a major uh, platform to help cinema at large, cinema in general. This is the most important. We, we discuss, uh, we disagree, uh, everybody has some favorite films or uh, doesn't like this film and you like it and blah, 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 blah. This is great. Uh, acknowledging that this serves a larger purpose. And the larger purpose is that altogether with our differences, with our even our antagonism, uh, we are building the condition of a visibility for cinema, of a visibility for different kinds of cinema. And that I am not enthusiastic about the Palme d'Or this year. I, I'm not against it, but I'm not crazy about it. But I think it's great. It's there and it helps that it was um, that it was shown and even that it was awarded. So even if it's not my own taste, I can understand very well the meaning and uh, the effect, positive effect on the longer term of uh, this film, which is not by far my favorite uh, among the film in competition. And this is exactly, this is very typical of, of the, the process of the Cannes Film Festival. And every year one can name um, the, the, the a few filmmakers, a few directors uh, who have uh, uh, benefited from what happened in Cannes in a, at a level that was really, it is maybe unchallenged by a, anywhere anywhere else because uh, of course you, there is the Oscar but the Oscar is a very special process which is not open to all the cinemas of the world and I'm very happy to say that among all these uh, all these um, people who did benefit this year from Cannes Film Festival there is a young Indian uh, filmmaker. Uh, whose first feature film uh, called A Night of Knowing Nothing, uh, her name is Payal Kapadia. Uh, she, she was very well received. It was in a parallel se section, not in competition. It was in Director's Fortnight, but it was very well received. It was awarded. Uh, it, it, it received very good reviews in major uh, newspaper worldwide. And 
hopefully uh, the future of this young woman uh, will be better thanks to Cannes Film Festival as a filmmaker than it, it would have been uh, without Cannes. And for me, it's very, very typical of what the festival can, can do. Uh, and it happens every year for a few, inevitably. Uh, and also it means a lot are left behind or are left on the, on the sides uh, of the... Of the um, it, maybe unfair to a certain extent because uh, some very good filmmaker and very good films may not be well received in Cannes, but basically uh, every year Cannes helps uh, to improve knowledge about cinema, uh, discovers of uh, new directors and uh, new tendencies in cinema. So, so I am, uh, the more I attend Cannes Film Festival, the more I'm convinced we, we need cinema at in general, needs something like can festival. Okay, uh, thank you. So uh, you have mentioned about uh, Pail Kapadia, and uh, interestingly, Pail Kapadia is an alumnus of Film and Television Institute of Pune, the same institute of Abhijit yes. Krishnan and uh, my co-moderator Audrey yeah, yeah. Kajal. He is proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, and, and of course because we, we we see the school in the film also. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so uh, thank you. You have mentioned about the official selections and uncertain regard that category. But if we look at uh, the Indian uh, cinema in the 80s and 90s, if you look at that period in Indian cinema, we have found some master filmmakers or veteran filmmakers. Their films are well accepted at the film festivals. But mm -hmm. recently, it has been uh, noticed that uh, the emerging filmmakers the way they have made uh, their films are not uh, selected either in the official selections or, or in uncertain uh, rigor that category. Uh, what mm -hmm. can be the reason? What, what is your take? What, how do you look at it? I, I am uh, I'm not very sure about the answer. I think uh, it has to do with Cannes Festival it, and it has to do with uh, Indian cinema. Uh, because uh, I, I'm sure there are good films made in India somewhere. <laughs> but if I could say, oh, look, Khan is not doing his work right because we see so many good Indian films in other festivals, uh, then we could say, yeah, yes, this is, uh, the, the, the blame is on Khan. But this is not true. In other major festivals, we don't see Indian film either meaning that the problem is not can specifically. Uh, the problem is uh, there are two ways to say it, let's say. Uh, what, one is that there is a general taste for cinema that is built by film festivals, cinephilia worldwide, and what films being made in India, generally speaking, do not fit with these expectations towards cinema uh, that uh, that we we I say we because I'm part of it, uh, of this process uh, with with many many others uh, critics and programmers and uh, distributors uh, etc. Um, and the other side would be uh, maybe in India the work is not done yeah. enough properly to open access to give visibility to 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 build the bridges between the best of indian cinema and the international uh, area at large not only can but of, of course can yeah. should be a, a major target uh, mm -hmm. for whoever should be in charge of uh, promoting uh, indian cinema as an art form or Indian cinemas, uh, I'm sure a uh, plural should be used because there are so many kind yeah. of kind of cinemas in India itself at large yeah. Uh, yeah. that uh, it should be it should be uh, uh, not only one kind of cinema. Uh, I remember uh, discovering uh, films by Adur uh, Gopalakrishnan mm -hmm. in, in Cannes, discovering films by Shaji Karun in Cannes with uh, with admiration and uh, and great uh, pleasure. Uh, later, uh, there were some films, uh, uh, Indian films discovered discovered by us, the Westerners like uh, Anurag Kashyap, uh, 
films, which personally I'm not especially crazy about, yeah. uh, or, um, or, or films I, I have to say I don't like, which I feel are too much made for Western yeah. viewers, like uh, mm -hmm. The Lunchbox, for instance, yeah, sure. uh, which was also in Cannes. So uh, I am expecting more um, diversity, more, uh, more uh, uh, different kinds of filmmaking from, from India, which I am convinced it does exist because India is a, such a huge country and such a huge country of cinema uh, for ages. So it's impossible, it's not somewhere. But obviously, there is a bridge missing, and it's both sides, both yeah. uh, sides who are not doing what should be done uh, to to make the bridge crossed between what is being made in India and the general, uh, yes, sir. general uh, cinephilic uh, community to call it this way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, recently, as a member of uh, Fipreski, I uh, could watch uh, some of the Indian films. And I could uh, I could watch uh, some of the the uh, finest films made by uh, Indian uh, filmmakers recently uh, that was uh, made in 2020, and uh, I was expecting that uh, some of the films might be selected uh, in Cannes, but yes, everyone everyone is targeting for the Cannes because Cannes will catapult to you <laughs> at, uh, to fame in one night. So everyone is expecting it's it's the filmmaker's dream to have. Uh, that their films are, should be selected at comes. Anyway, uh, I'd like to uh, request my co-moderator, Adhiraj Kaishok. I just I have already told you that he's a student of FTII in the direction course. Uh, he would like to ask some, uh, some questions uh, from his side. Yes, over to Adhiraj Kaishok. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hi, sir. Thank you. First of all, thank you so much for being here with us. It means a lot to us. So thank you so much for taking our time. So uh, you have been a film critic and a film historian like uh, for a very long time. You have uh, written about cinema, journals, articles, books, and you have been very active in doing that. So uh, you have also, as an editor to probably one of the most prominent film magazines in the world, Kehir Deo Cinema. So uh, coming from a country, our country, I've always felt, and I think everyone will agree that uh, we don't have such film magazines or such uh, platforms, such common platforms where cinema is discussed enough. There is no proper discourse of cinema. There is no proper uh, critical analysis of cinema. I think <coughs> film magazines uh, are primarily about all the other things apart from cinema, where we should be concentrating, we don't. So how do you think these common platforms, these film magazines or other common platforms where cinema is discussed very often or very regularly, how do you think these uh, platforms, these magazines can uh, help in developing a proper film culture in a country or in a society. So, how, uh, what do you think? How, how important it is to have such magazines or such common platforms where people discuss cinema? Hmm. Uh, well, you are absolutely right about uh, the importance, of the the, the uh, strategic position. Um, in media, I'm even hesitating to use the word media because, uh, but a space where films are being uh, discussed and uh, which are um, uh, elaborating and stabilizing a strong relation towards cinema. Uh, of course, it it is. Uh, it depends on so many factors that it is uh, uh, difficult to build it from scratch. As if let's do, you, you can't just say let's do it and 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 make it happen because it you 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 are never in in control of uh, the whole uh, the whole process. What I believe is that anyway, it it was true when Kayedi Cinema was founded, which is. 70 years ago now exactly uh, so it's a long time ago it was a different world um, and it's still true now it's a network issue it's not only the magazine when cahier du cinema were founded in france there were dozens of other uh, film journals or film ma magazines but there were cine clubs there was a cinematheque uh, there was a film culture 
of the time, which was very active, and among which some eminent uh, part of this network become more visible and had more effects than others, but could exist only because there was the whole uh, environment, like like a biotope, uh, to 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 make. Uh, uh, love for cinema because it has to do with love it has to do with emotional relation to cinema uh, and, and of course it has to do with knowledge it has to do with uh, research it has to do with so uh, what, what I think is the, the, the most uh, significant thing that can be hopefully uh, attempted and I think what you are doing is part of it is definitely part of it is, is a connecting uh, Film studies in uh, in university, uh, people who, who write in uh, in in the media, uh, cine clubs, festivals, uh, and and to to and uh, obviously in our times using as a major resource internet. Uh, I, I love print. I've been working for printed newspaper most of my life, and I've been writing too many printed books. Uh, to, so so I, it's not against print and uh, anytime it makes sense to print, uh, I think it sh should still be done, but we know that it has to be massively online uh, to, to, to circulate and not only to circulate, but to connect, to, 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 to build connections. There's a network is, is uh, the core of internet. Uh, and there's a the notion of, of network and that uh, the, the ability to, uh, uh, how should I say that, uh, to, to pay attention, to, to, to say, oh, but there is uh, some group of uh, young, young people in uh, Maharashtra who have a, a very interesting way to talk about cinema that maybe relate with uh, um, uh, another group who are on the other. The, the, the way to, to, to go one step uh, beyond to, 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 because uh, there is no doubt there is a lot of uh, great people who make film, think about film, teach about films in, in India. Uh, but uh, maybe the, the issue is more to turn this into a, a, a collective um, uh, trend uh, and uh, interrelations with uh, dispute, with uh, disagreement, with uh, KD cinema. KD cinema was never highly circulated. It's very, the, the number of copies was always very small. Uh, uh, but it has an effect which is immense worldwide. Uh, I was always struck when, when, when I was uh, editor in chief of, of Cahiers du Cinema, anywhere in the world I would go, people knew about Cahiers du Cinema, uh, even if they could not read French, uh, but they knew at least the, the, the name and the effect of Cahiers du Cinema. And in its time, always Cahiers du Cinema has had more, much more effects than uh, what um, the, the real number of readers, uh, because it had echoes, it was uh, commented, it was discussed, and it was uh, spreading uh, way larger. And for instance, when, when I was in the Cahiers du Cinéma, uh, something I did, we, we did, uh, with, uh, the team I was working with, uh, not alone, of course, uh, was to extend uh, extensively uh, the uh, website, the organization of screenings uh, all over the country and abroad, uh, and there's a label of Cahiers du Cinéma uh, to um, uh, increase the number of books that were published. Uh, and and so I mean so so so, so many it's it, it's really about networking as much as possible and connecting the strengths because we can trust that the strengths do exist anyway we we don't have anything else so we have to bet on it so to speak uh, but based on that uh, to 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 uh, see everywhere something happens and one of the most uh, significant things that can happen is a film festival okay so not only show films but discussion workshops guests 
uh, intense uh, work on the internet to advertise and to give visibility to what's going there. And I think I, I really think this is uh, happening. One of the new uh, option for that is also a, um, alternative uh, cinephile platforms online, uh, but where you do not only throw films and it's over, but when you use film to build a film culture with environment, with each film, discussions, uh, uh, debates, uh, short, short films related with the major films, uh, programming in the in the highest meaning of the word programming, which is uh, central uh, thinking of how to, to coordinate, to assemble uh, proposals, which can include films and not only films, uh, talks, uh, writings, uh, stills, uh, music, uh, everything, is, 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 uh, is the, the, the only uh, way to, to resist the, 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 the the dominant power, which is market. Uh, ultimately, market knows what you should uh, eat, drink, uh, watch, <laughs> read, uh, everything, and has decided for you. So this, this is why I teach in political science, because I believe ultimately it's an issue of freedom. It's an issue of uh, democracy, uh, that we build other relations, other access to stories to bodies to a uh, uh, way of uh, looking at each other and and this can be built only with uh, with um, yes with um, uh, connecting together the, and, and i think of course it's very banal to say that but uh, that only internet now it's great to have a local journal any any time you can and it works and uh, i love it but i think it's it has to be on the internet now, definitely. Thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. So you talked about the effect Kehirdi cinema has all over the world. So the same kind of effect is borne by French New Wave. Like uh, it has inspired generations after generations, not only in mm -hmm. France, but all over the world. Like mm -hmm. uh, Godard, then Truffaut, along with all the others, uh, where the Rive, then later mm -hmm. on Eric Romer. All those people were major influences on young filmmakers all over the world. But uh, one particular yes. yes, sorry, sorry. Yeah, one particular quality about them were the fact that they were also, uh, apart from being practicing filmmakers, they were also they wrote about cinema, they discussed about cinema. And here, the cinema obviously was a common platform, so they were like film scholars and film critiques also. So, do you think that's uh, uh, going downhill? Do you think like filmmakers of today's generation don't? Uh, engage in reading or writing or discussing cinema as much as earlier? And do you think that that uh, like discussing and reading about cinema can be uh, very useful in nourishing young cinematic minds? Uh, I meet a lot of young filmmakers who are actually very active in social networks uh, or having blogs or reading uh, others. Uh, and uh, I, I don't think at all. Of course, the exact pattern of what was Cahiers du Cinéma with a future new wave director is not likely to happen again. Uh, and it's not, uh, I'm not sure it's a good idea to try to imitate or to, or to uh, re react uh, what happened in the 50s, uh, 1950s, uh, <laughs> 70 years ago. Uh, but uh, I, I am convinced i i know i i meet them before the pandemic i used to travel a lot in um, all over the world and uh, have a lot of discussions uh, including with uh, young filmmakers and not only from filmmakers uh, and also dops uh, editors uh, sound persons uh, producers uh, who are very curious and who know a lot sometimes i might say too much uh in the sense of being not enough related with just do it okay you, you you've read uh all the all the good books now uh, go go and do it uh, and and um and this this uh is uh, existing online 
uh, obviously it's a, it's a much more online so there are people who are still reading books and and, my, and film journals and I'm happy it it makes my uh, income uh, <laughs> every, every month I eat thanks to them but but uh, basically uh, um, I, I am uh, uh, I, I am confident in the in this uh, ability uh, of uh, uh, young filmmakers what happened with the French new wave is a is something uh, not totally bizarre but partly because you know what what the french new wave did others had done it before them but it was not acknowledged uh, the british had done it with what's known as a uh, new new english cinema the brazilians has done it cinema novel begins before french new wave uh, so uh, and and uh, some Americans uh, had done it also, this kind of freedom in the, in the way of, of filming. But there was, in France and nowhere else, these connections, are, so which does include something which I'm afraid is unlikely to be found in India uh, for, for now, at least, which was also a state support, uh, uh, political support, uh, for culture and especially for the culture of cinema, for the art of cinema, which was very strong and the uh, Minister of Culture would help and promote the French New Wave and uh, send French New Wave films in major film festivals worldwide or would give authorization to, to shoot so it was out of the rules to Godard and to uh, Alain René. Uh, and, and I'm, I'm not sure you can find such a, such a thing, at least at the uh, national uh, level maybe uh, on, in some regions in some some states of of, of uh, india it's more possible but uh, and, and it was it was a, the combination of a intellectual artistic professional political all of this together and and uh, but uh, i think uh, other combination of strengths should be should be should be invented for, for, for now, especially in a so different situation you you have to deal with in, in India, which is obviously very different from what we still have to deal with in, in France or in Western Europe even uh, at large. So the comparison cannot be pushed uh, so indefinitely because there are some, some major differences for better or worse. Um, to, to, to also which will make your cinema you will make different from ours which is good hopefully mm -hmm. uh, but of course is a, is a, is a, the, but the, the, the nevertheless connecting forces is the only answer I can think of uh, any anyway okay thank you sir so you have uh, mentioned festivals and how they function there's a certain way of the festivals the major festivals functioning. So you have mentioned that uh, Cannes Film Festival function in a certain way. There will be probably sometimes certain kind of winners. There will be certain kind of uh, promoting certain kind of films. Do you think that in the recent past, maybe or because you have and I speak from a very uh, limited knowledge because I don't have any first-hand experience of a major film festival. But I'm just asking: Do you think that in the recent past, the all those putting into boxes or serving to a certain kind of uh, taste? In these film, uh, in these film festivals, have uh, hampered the voices, young new voices, all over the world. Because you said, like uh, you have mentioned, Lunchbox. How is it trying to serve to the Western audience? So there'd be other films like that from all across the world, which is trying to, in a way, fit into that film festival circuit or festival taste, which is trying to serve that taste. So do you think that it's a problem, and how can probably young filmmakers move away from it? Yes, I think uh, there is a problem, uh, but it's it's not only uh, th this was an example, but uh, what one might call of sincerity. Uh, it may be uh, it may depend on the director. It may also often depend on the producers. The producer would push in a direction which he or she believes will be welcome by some uh, targeted audience, 
typically the festival goers. Uh, so the film should uh, resemble with that. And then uh, the film uh, would uh, either find its own voice inside even this pattern. Why not? It, 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 it can happen and it does happen or not. And if he does, if the film does not find it, it's what I call its own voice, it's its own tone, its own uh, uh, aesthetic uh, way of putting things together, stories, uh, actors, uh, uh, backgrounds, uh, rhythm, whatever, uh, then it will, it will be just a, it's a kind of a formula film. It's like a genre film. It's the same question with genre. We know inside genre, wonderful films can be made, and if you said there is a genre of, uh, of festival films, or maybe let's say film from countries known as South, from the South, what is called South by people from the North usually, uh, um, uh, made for film festivals inside this kind of genre, special kind of genre. There are wonderful films which are very, uh, actually, actually original, even if they are uh, going through these uh, patterns, as there are wonderful films which are playing with the rules of comedy or with the rules of a uh, thriller or with the rules of a uh, uh, horror movie or, uh, or w w whatever. So uh, I, I don't think it is, a, it ultimately uh, it's, the answer is always the same you have to watch films one by one. Uh, and your feeling is that this film is actually reaching something great, whatever the means he has. It. And it, it seemed to be doomed to be uh, uh, just and one more uh, like the, and, and the other one, which him so uh, new, uh, when you watch a film, you said, no, sorry, but I've seen all of this before several times and uh, I don't buy it any, anymore because I, I don't care. But it's really one by one and it's very dangerous to, to establish general uh, rules of what's, what should be made or not made because what's great with any art, especially uh, cinema, is that it keeps breaking the rule. It keeps uh, doing unexpected things even inside the most uh, defined and uh, apparently under control uh, format. So it's 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 almost not possible to to to, to pre decide what should be or not be done. Uh, of course, you can give us such a very general and a bit stupid uh, advice like be sincere as a filmmaker or follow your uh, your instinct or what you what you what comes from inside of you which you can always say these kind of things but it doesn't help much uh, ultimately anybody who is working in cinema knows it it's hundreds thousands millions of small decisions in the process of filmmaking which ultimately will uh, reach a final object we watch when it's over uh, and uh, then then you each of us is entitled to say uh, it, yeah it it may be like so many others but actually i see something very new very fresh very original I, i've learned something i felt something i never felt before i have had access to a certain way of seeing the world which comes from others and which is new to me, and I'm grateful for that, uh, or not. But this is very hard to, to, to pre-decide. It's only when the film is made that you can react to, 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 to this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sir. It was an honor talking to you. I think and it is, no, no, it's my, my pleasure. And, and of course, because we are speaking like if the director was alone, but he's yeah. not alone, and uh, he has, and to make a film, every uh, all of you know this, I'm afraid, more even than I do, uh, you have to go through a lot of
process discussion with people, money people, uh, or uh, institutional support and uh, festival programmers and all of this. All of these people have expectations, and it's yeah. fair. You cannot expect that they wouldn't have. They will have. No way <laughs> that they don't. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's so you have to negotiate with that and to be incredibly strong to keep what comes from you going through all these people who are basically good people. They are not enemies, yeah. but they, are, they have other expectations. And you have to go move uh, inside the, all this, uh, this process and not lose yourself, not lose your film in the process. This is what being a filmmaker is to a large extent uh, nowadays, ev everywhere. Uh, but even more if you are from a country which doesn't have access to the international scene as easily as a, a French filmmaker, Italian filmmaker, or obviously American filmmaker has. Thank you, thank you, sir. I think part of will take it on from you. Thank you, Odras. Uh, uh, the, uh, the questions you have put uh, to Mr. Fodosa, it has, and it has enlightened some new aspects. It has talked, uh, Mr. Fodosa has mentioned about uh, Cinema Novo. It has particularly mentioned about the Cinema Novo and uh, of the Brazil. At the same time, Sar has mentioned about the British New Cinema when uh, in context of the French New Wave. That is a very uh, new insights uh, for the participants. So I had one question, but I think it will be better if I uh, request the participants to uh, ask questions to Zam itself for the sir, Indonil, or you can ask. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, a very good evening to you. Uh, we are delighted to have you in the session. So my question is again related to France New Ways. Uh, so my question is, uh, what is the philosophical importance of the French New Wave and their role in the development of a theory of flame? Okay, uh, so the most important things to understand about French New Wave, I think, is that it is not a style or not what we call a school. Uh, like, for instance, in painting, there is Impressionist school meaning that when you see uh, Impressionist paintings, you can immediately say, oh, this belongs to the Impressionist school. Even if there are different painters with different qualities, they have the same uh, uh, set of aesthetics that defines what, 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 what they are doing. Uh, French New Wave is basically a, a spirit, a spirit of freedom, which is... Uh, acknowledging the, 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 the potentiality to do things differently that they used to be done and to keep inventing. One of the characteristics of the French New Wave people is that they were first not only critic, but not primarily critic, as it has been said, but cinephiles. They have been spending hours, 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 hours in, in cinemas, especially in the cinematic, watching films, a lot of films from all over the world. So they could play with the rules of cinema they knew so well because they've been watching so many films and they've been thinking about cinema as critics uh, to, uh, yes, to play with the rules. Play with the rules may mean destroy them, but may also mean just displace a little or uh, reassemble differently. It's not always destructive. Uh, it, it can be uh, just uh, a small step aside from, from the, the usual ways of uh, making a frame, making a cut in the editing, of uh, defining a character, using dialogues, any, any dimension, any, any uh, uh, component of, of filmmaking. And they, they, they knew it almost in their body and through their deep knowledge, almost physical knowledge, and this is why I was talking about love, uh, because you have to have a passion for, <laughs> for watching films uh, uh, to, 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 to spend your life in cinemas, basically. Um, uh, no, no, go 
to cafe, don't go to dancing, don't go to uh, <laughs> whatever. You, you go to the movies because you like it better. No, nobody asks you to. You, you are not forced to do that. It's not an uh, obligation. Or it's not like uh, going to school where it's uh, mandatory. It's, uh, they just want to be there. Uh, they are skipping school to go to, to, to be there. We are. I would speak skipping school to, to go wow. to the movies. Uh, 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 and, and, um, and then uh, uh, from this kind of uh, internal knowledge or uh, sense let's say sensitive knowledge of, of uh, the cinema process, which is with Hitchcock films, with Mizoguchi films, uh, with Fritz Lang films, with uh, uh, Rossellini films, which are so different one from the other, they can uh, go in so many directions. And uh, then uh, Eric Romer films does not look like a Jean-Luc Godard film at all. Uh, ultimately, and uh, and uh, François Truffaut's film doesn't look like uh, uh, Alain René's film uh, at all. They, they are doing so many different kinds of things from this uh, relation uh, to uh, the media, cinema, and from this um, being very sure that there is much more that can be done with the cinematic apparatus that what has been done already uh, from inside it's not bringing so much from outside adding you can add elements which comes for instance from other arts from uh, painting from uh, music from uh, dance uh, etc and, and there are a lot of wonderful things that have been done this way but um, they they mostly came from inside cinema to expand uh, its, its potentialities uh, in so many uh, directions and uh, one of the most beautiful uh, science fiction films ever made was made with only still photographs by Chris Marker, uh, La Jetée. Uh, so, and this is pure cinema, though there is not even moving image. Uh, so it, what? <laughs> uh, how can you can you do such a thing? And, 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 and this is typical of, I think, the, the, the real meaning of what New Wave uh, brought in is just opening potentialities. And uh, for me, this year, when I see, for instance, Apichat Pong, where as a tech cool new film in competition in Cannes, I see, well, this is new wave. Uh, and of course, it's very far away. It's a Thai director shooting in Colombia. I mean, it's, there's so many things which are very far from the French, uh, Parisian, uh, Quartier Latin uh, uh, film uh, in, in 1961 or something. But no, this is new wave in the very sense of the of this formula, which is, this is the freedom of the powers of cinema that can be expanded indefinitely by creative uh, filmmakers. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, my name is Abhishek Bhattakur, and I have one question to you, sir. Uh, Criteria is how a film critic watch a film? Uh, I would say, hopefully, None. <laughs> uh, I'd say, for, for me, if I had to defin, define what I do as a film critic, is try to translate my emotions in writing. Uh, it's not, I have knowledge about cinema, of course. This is 40 years I do this job. Uh, I, I watch films, uh, I, uh, I read, I write, uh, I teach. Uh, it would be uh, stupid to pretend I, there is no knowledge. But at the end of it, I am convinced that the most important is not there. The most important is this process, very bizarre, very weird, uh, which you see films as anybody, you feel things, you, you, you are moved, uh, you are Brighton, you are, you find this funny, you find this stupid, you find this ugly, you find this wonderfully beautiful. Okay, everybody does that in a, in a cinema. Then few people, they try, this is what I do, to translate these uh, feelings, inner feelings, emotional feelings, into writing. And hopefully through this, through this process of writing, 
it touches something which has to do with thinking. Yeah. Uh, I'm not the one to say if the thinking is right or wrong or uh, interesting or not, but you reach something which has to do with thinking about, not only about cinema, thinking about the world we live in through yeah. cinema and through the emotions that have been felt watching one specific movie. So the only criteria uh, is, uh, would be how much this film helps me to, or allows me to feel by myself and think by myself. There are a lot of films who are uh, taking power, uh, who are trying to take power on your brain, your heart, your guts, and uh, to who, which decide what you are going to feel and what you are going to think. For me, these are enemies. And my work as a critic is to explain how it works and how it's, it's a, uh, building uh, this kind of unfair relation. And there are a lot of films, hopefully, not, not as many, but uh, <laughs> nevertheless quite a lot, uh, which are opening space for you to elaborate uh, with your uh, knowledge, uh, your hopes, your fears, uh, your, uh, your uh, expectations, uh, wh whatever you have inside yourself, which does relate with the story of uh, a boy and a girl who are in love with uh, uh, bad guys who are shooting at each other. It, it works with any kind of films. Uh, it's the way the film is made, which is either opening space for you or closing space. Okay. And if there is a criteria at the end, it's about that. And this okay. is what... Thank you, sir. Uh, Monsi, you were supposed to ask questions. Okay? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just ask a little question. Uh, hello, Monty, sir. It's a, it's a pleasure. Of, uh, it's a pleasure. Of, uh, it's a pleasure. In institute, they are in Kolkata. He's a clinical school student. Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, nice to have you here. Uh, I actually uh, I found the name of your book very interesting. That uh, about Zia Zanke, the war of Zia Zanke, and I really would like oh, to. Oh. Work yeah, work. work. Uh, yeah, uh, the work of Zia Zanke. So, uh, world, work. no? Uh -huh. the, world. the world of Zia Zanke. So, Zia Zanke is uh, one of my very uh, favorite masters, and I think Odiraz also likes him a lot. So, <laughs> we actually wanted to know from you how you look at his works and uh, Asian cinema per se in the present um, scenario, how Asian cinema is uh, growing. Uh, in a very interesting way. So we'd like to listen from you about that, like how you look at that. Please, friends. Uh, <laughs> my dear uh, Parthas, you will have to invite me again uh, <laughs> to make a whole discussion about that because it's a huge, uh, it, it's a huge question. And uh, I'm afraid uh, I won't have time to answer uh, really to, to this question, especially if we talk about Asian cinema, because Asian cinema is a huge <laughs> domain and uh, just uh, Chinese cinemas, if we, talk about mainland China and Taiwan and Hong Kong, we already have to discuss for years, <laughs> so to speak, about, uh, about, about, uh, about this. But uh, just to try to make it uh, short, uh, Chazanke, uh, uh, I believe, uh, embodies uh, a major uh, event in the history of contemporary cinema. Uh, which is the translation uh, through cinema of a major event, if not the major event of what happened on Earth in the last uh, 25 years, which is the uh, arrival of China as a uh, superpower uh, on the planet. And uh, what Jazankyo has been doing with cinema means is uh, showing how it happened, what happened, how it affected the life of his uh, co-citizens, uh, of the Chinese people. Uh, and it was very interesting because uh, uh, Jia Zhangke doesn't come from Beijing or Shanghai. He comes from a smaller town uh, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the province. And he described uh, the, the life of people outside 
of the main centers and uh, of the uh, and more average uh, Chinese people. This is with India the two largest population on on, on planet, but the, the the size of the shift the, this country has experienced is probably without any precedent in the history of mankind. Uh, the speed of the the, the, the changing of this society uh, and uh, Chinese cinema has been uh, translating this uh, very strongly and uh, efficiently uh, uh, since uh, what's known as fifth generation, so since uh, the 80s, but mostly uh, after, after at the end of the 90s and in the 21st century. And uh, the one who has uh, embodied the most uh, directly and the most efficiently uh, uh, with cinema cinema tools. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, this process is Jiazanke is very clear for, for me, not only for me, it's largely acknowledged. Uh, and, and then, uh, of course, it goes uh, with so many uh, uh, processes which has to do with uh, the technical tools he, he used with uh, the the combination of fiction and documentary uh, in the in the in the making of films with uh, the the working again with the same actors uh, in various uh, situations with uh, sh changing places inside the country uh, to to uh, both being very much rooted and related with his birthplace province of uh, Shanxi we made a film uh, together with director, Brazilian director Walter Salles about Jazanke called A Boy from Fenyang, which is saying Jazanke is connected with his small town where he was born, called Fenyang, uh, and it's very important to him, uh, with also uh, supporting other directors uh, at the beginning uh, of his generation and when he grew up younger. So he's been producing, he's been advertising, he's been... The first time I meet Jazanke, uh, he, he... We make a long interview and uh, we discuss a lot. The second time I meet him, uh, one year after, he comes with 50, not 50, uh, 20 or something, uh, DVDs of Chinese film by young directors, others than his. Nobody does that. But when you're a young filmmaker, you're starting a career, you're starting to be recognized internationally, uh, you want to be uh, in the front. <laughs> you, don't, you want the others to, to remain behind. He thinks better. He thinks alone is not enough. And he shows me, he says, watch all of this. This is important. This is happening now. And he brings more than 20 DVDs of 20 films by other filmmaker, Chinese filmmakers, he knows. And then he would become a producer for others. He would create a festival that was created a film school uh, in, uh, in his province, uh, not in Beijing, again, not in Shanghai or uh, Guangzhou, but in, in his more remote uh, area. Uh, and so this, this is really a strategic thinking at the same time as a great artist. Uh, this is why I respect him so much and I admire him so much as an artist, of course. If he was not a great filmmaker, none of this would would be so important, it would be the same, it would be different. It could, could be important, but not the same. He's a great filmmaker, no doubt, and his films are great art films, but he's also a political strategist, so, so, so to... So you went on mute, sir. Your microphone is mute. Yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah, and it does, it does connect the, his art and his political and strategic thinking. It's, it's a whole. This, this is what makes him so important to me. Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely, sir. Thank you so much. Yes, any other questions? We'll take one question only. And then... Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, someone is ready. Monsieur David, David has raised his hand. <laughs> yes, yes, David Legasso. Yes, David, you asked the question. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah, good evening. Okay, can you hear me? 
Yes, yes, I hear you. I can't see you, but I hear you. Okay, okay. good evening, sir. My question is, uh, are European film festivals more accepting than American film festivals? My, I mean to say, uh, films of Woody Allen and Roman Polanski are constantly shown at the Cannes Film Festival. But in America, there is this culture called cancel culture. So I just want to know, is it possible to separate the art and the artist? OK, that's my uh, question. I, my, my view on this is that you have to watch films again uh, and decide. We, we are no judge, judges or police. Uh, if if somebody, even a great filmmaker, has committed a crime or a delict, he should be uh, fined or he should go to jail if, it, if he's just guilty or uh, that there is no protection. Uh, I don't think there should be any specific protection for somebody who has done something wrong if it is proved that he has done something wrong. So this is one thing. And then we should watch the, the films. The film festival are, are not uh, uh, judges in a, in a court. Uh, they are uh, artistic. Uh, so they have to, 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 to watch the, uh, the films that are also offered to them. It's the film. Some, some horrible people have been doing very important uh, works of art in history, uh, if, if you think uh, backward. And uh, so uh, we, we are interested. We want to know about uh, works which are meaningful and uh, which tell us important things about uh, uh, how we humans are, uh, even if those who made them uh, were, were uh, not only wrong, but did uh, awful things uh, in, in in their life. So I think it is uh, it is important to to keep watching films. But then, if you ask me, uh, using the two examples you you took, for me it's totally different. Uh, I think Woody Allen uh, makes films which are fair, which are uh, paying attention to people, which are sensitive. And I think that most generally, um, Polanski has uh, ugly eyes. He sees the world through uh, like uh, a, a way that is despising the other, that is manipulating the other, uh, that is uh, uh, forcing the dark side, not because there is darkness in the world, but because it is useful for him. As a, and uh, I would certainly not put them on the same uh, level uh, as a critic, uh, as a, somebody who goes to the cinema. And this so so. And for me, there is a something wrong, maybe even disgusting, in the cinema of Polanski, uh, and and not in the not at all in the cinema of Woody Allen. So apart from. The, situ the mediatic situation, which at one point put them together on the same level, which I believe is totally unfair. Uh, I, I, am, I think we can still uh, try to think, maybe a lot of people think differently from, from me, and uh, I know a lot of people who love Polanski cinema, for instance, which I don't, uh, and, and, um, and it should be discussed, it should be uh, argued about, but that uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, there is also uh, ways to, to think about moral issues through the film. This is what we may have to deal with as film critics or programmers or professors, or teachers, or, or even viewers and citizens. Uh, but this is not in the same field as uh, going to a court or, or, uh, or going to uh, the next precinct because somebody has been doing some bad deeds and should be prevented from from keeping doing it whatever whatever he is or she is uh, thank, you, thank, you. Uh, thank you so much uh, now i like to request i can uh, bhagavati 
a student of mass communication test university that is a central university and uh, she is going to offer the vote of thanks of this session yes akanksha bhagavat um firstly a very warm good evening to one and all present here and uh, as i have already been introduced my name is akanksha and i am a student of mass communication and journalism tishko university and uh, firstly i think i'm very pleased uh, to be a part of this wonderful evening and uh, i feel extremely honored uh, to have the privilege to offer the vote of thanks for this uh, wonderful evening that all of us have uh, been a part of now before starting off uh, with uh, the web talk i had this idea of how i would go about uh, the vote of thanks that i am assigned i thought i would give a few insights then go about the vote of thanks part that is formally done and i thought i would jot down three four insights but uh, frankly sir the whole session has uh, been so much more than three points or four points that i stand a little confused uh, as to what to say and what not because there is so much there is uh, there is so much to say the ocean of knowledge that you have shared and uh, the fresh perspective that you have given us it's so unique and uh, it's so new that i am actually short of words and i i'm confused what to share and what not because i believe all of us are you know we i i strongly believe this that uh, we are conditioned to think in a particular way but when you said uh, that your idea of seeing films as an extension of life and uh, seeing films as something that is not made in an isolated island and that filmmakers need to go out there and you know really have a life uh, to be able to make films and understand characters and that is something very inspirational because i'm not a film student uh, technically but that that inspires me to see films in a new way and probably become a filmmaker someday so thank you very much for that and uh, I, i i thank you on behalf of everybody for giving us your time because uh, you know listening to a person like you who has defined film criticism and who has defined like the idea of how films i think are seen in the world and in the society is it's our honor to have you here sir and uh, thank you for enlightening not just me but uh, the minds of the whole uh, you know the curious minds of the sunlit family and uh, we are very thankful and uh, i think i'll just go on and on if i keep on saying this but uh, thank you very much and i would just jot down the few points that i've written so uh, so meticulously discussed about the present position of uh, kans film festival he mentioned about pyal kapadia whose documentary was selected Uh, and uh, he enlightened us on how networking is important in uh, you know a better and uh, i would say greater discourse of cinema and development in catalyzing develop and catalyzing the process of development of cinema in any society he focused on the role of internet which itself i think is very uh, it clearly shows the openness that he has not just towards films and film criticism but towards life in general because coming that because that coming from a person like your you from like from your generation i think it's 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 something new that i've heard and uh, uh, one phrase that i'll all phrase that i'll always remember is uh, when you said that uh, learning from encounters so that is something that i strongly believe in because all that we learn is not just in a closed classroom but the encounters that we have with people in personal lives and uh, you you spoke about how uh, there will always be uh, so much to look up to as long as filmmakers continue to bring up fresh uh, you know fresh perspective fresh ideas in movies and not uh, you know contain themselves in a, a formula of how movies are supposed to be made so that is something that i'll carry on with uh, me and i think all of us are very lucky to hear you in this way and uh, lastly sir I, i this is an input from my end that uh, uh, what can be better than an interaction like this to bridge the gap between uh, uh, the indian filmmakers and the international standards that you talk about so thank you very much and uh, i offer my heartfelt gratitude on behalf of the whole team and uh, i i think i'll have to move forward because i'll just keep on saying uh, things about you only so um, mm. next i would also like to thank uh, dr bharati bharali ma'am she is the assistant professor of department of mass Commun- uh, department of communication and journalism guwahati university she is a fantastic writer and uh, in our culture we have this idea that when the start is good the show goes uh, you know the end is good the shows go the show goes well so it is because of the wonderful start that she has given that i think we could sail off in such a beautiful and effortless manner so uh, thank you ma'am then i would also like to acknowledge uh, dr mridul borle sir he is the associate professor department of english dibrugarh university he is a noted academic and who better than him to actually give a brief introduction about uh, our resource person 
Then uh, I would like to go on and thank our moderators for the session. Firstly, Parthasit Borua. He's a film scholar. He's an Indian member of the International Federation of Film Critics, and he's an academic. And uh, I think these three designations do not define him because uh, what he has done for all of us, uh, the the gap that he has bridged between students like us and uh, scholars like uh, and scholars and eminent personalities like Jean Michel Frodonsa is, I think, enormous. It's something that I I don't think it was in my reach at least, but it is possible because of Sir. And uh, I, be, I would like to thank Sir on behalf of everyone. So next, I would like to uh, thank Adhiraj Kashyap. So he's a student of Film and Television Institute of India, Pune. And uh, he has definitely given a very fresh perspective. He has, he has uh, like, I'm not a film student, so I don't have much idea about how the theories, but he has surely given me some insight into how, into the theories and into the ideas of films. So thank you very much, Adhiraj. And uh, last but not the least, I would also like to thank the respected members of the Sunlit Studio Film Club, which like we all know consists of veteran filmmakers, professors, journalists, film scholars, film critics, theater artists, aspiring actors, filmmakers, film students, and media students as well. And indeed everyone who loves movies, uh, who has this element, I would say the DNA of a, a film lover or a cinephile. So thank you everyone because no conversation or no meeting is i believe uh, lively without uh, uh, you know uh, an uh, an active audience sorry i'm just fumbling so yeah so that's something that i have to say and uh, i believe the vote of thanks has not been a very formal one but it is from the bottom of my heart so thank you very much everyone uh, over to you partiji uh, uh, thank you so much i thank uh, Pagoti. Usually, what happens when uh, someone offers a vote of thanks, normally they simply say thank you or thank you to the, the other resource person. But the way she has picked up the inputs from uh, the conversations uh, from our resource persons, uh, Mr. Fotosa, so it's really very uh, enormous. Uh, I really, uh, I must appreciate the way you have uh, picked up the uh, inputs and points uh, from our conversations. And the way, as a student, the way you have uh, presented the whole uh, word of thanks, I'm sure, and I, I, I'm sure that Za uh, Mitchell Fodosa will will also agree with me that she has a bright future. <laughs> I do agree. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, uh, I, I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, finally, it is a uh, privilege and honor that John Mitchell Fodosa has given his consent and he has spared his valuable time out of his busy schedule. I'm, I'm fortunate for two reasons. Number one, uh, he was the uh, person who has given me his consent to write the preface of my book on Adu Gopala Krishna. That was the first uh, way he has, uh, he has uh, helped me out. He has, the way John Mitchell Fodosa has said that the filmmaker has brought other 20 DVD with him. So John Mitchell sir, doesn't want to go and swim. He wants to inspire the film uh, scholar like us. That is a very inspiring thing that uh, I have been inspired at the very uh, at the very beginning of my life. Now again, when he given uh, he has given his consent uh, to interact with uh, the film students, I was highly excited. So, and we are really thankful, sir and uh, for your available time we'll keep in touch and we at the same time last line we are fortunate that uh, we must say thankful to the COVID-19 pandemic because it is a blessing in disguise though it is a hard time it is because of the COVID-19 pandemic we, we are connected through this uh, medium <laughs> thank you sir thank you thank you so much Thank, yeah, you. Thank, you. My, thank you, sir. My, my pleasure, and uh, it was great to talk with all of you. Thank, thank you thank so you. much for all that. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. yeah, I formally announced that the, uh, the session has come to me. Thank you, sir. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, sir.